morning. Let's go ahead and do our uh, reading lesson for the day. It's a pretty easy lesson. Uh, now, typically I have you read and reading, but today is what we call a literature lesson. Uh, we're going to talk about fables and folktales, so it's actually a little article, and so I'm going to help you with this. And so one of the work text pages is what you're going to have to do for your assignment, and then one of them I'm going to help you with, okay? So let's look in our reader book on page 35. Now, we're going to talk about uh, folk tales and fables. And uh, so what we're going to do is I want you to follow along with me as I read this page. And I want you to find out how they're similar and how they're different. It's kind of the same thing we're doing in English is compare and contrast. So fables and folk tales are, the, are very similar and they're also different. So let's read here on page 35. Storytelling has always been a good way to explain an idea. Many stories that are part of our literary heritage have been told and retold to help pass on to new generations the values and ideas that are important to a country. Fables and folk tales are two kinds of stories that teach. So let's read about fables. So we know both of them teach lessons. So let's see about fables. No doubt you've been reading fables in one form or another since kindergarten or first grade. Aesop, a Greek slave, was probably the greatest fable writer of all time. Aesop's fables, like most others, are very short stories and they come to the point quickly. There are a few details about the setting and characters. Most often in fables, they're animals. Um, they have names, but little other description. The story always draws a moral or a lesson, which is sometimes stated at the end of the fable. Some of the morals of Aesop's fab fables have become famous, like the one in the maid and her milk pail. The moral has become a well-known saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch. The fable, The Wind and the Sun, teaches that gentleness can accomplish what force cannot. The Boy Who Cried Wolf teaches that liars are not believed, even when they tell the truth. And the famous story about the hare and the tortoise demonstrates that slow and steady wins the race. Think of other fables that you've read. Very likely they can be traced to the Greek slave who wrote them down hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So fables use animals in the stories. They're very short and they teach lessons. Now, let's read about folk tales. And remember, Aesop wrote lots of fables. So he's going to be the one that we talk about mostly when we talk about fables. So let's look at folk tales. Uncle Remus stories, like Mr. Wolf Makes a Failure, are examples of folk tales. Most experts believe that the slaves of the southern colonies brought the Br'er Rabbit tales with them from Africa and over the years made them fit the language and customs of the American South. These stories were told and retold by slaves. Joel Chandler Harris finally wrote them down. Mr. Harris worked hard to keep the dialect of the storytellers as he wrote. All right, look at the next page on page 37. Hans Clodhopper is another example of a folk tale. It was passed on orally, that means they told it, from person to person until someone finally wrote it down. Some other folk tales that you probably know are Cinderella and Little Red Riding Hood. You probably don't want to see this map on the board. <laughs> Which came from France. Hansel and Gretel. The Bremen Town Musicians. That's one of my favorites. And Snow White. Those are German tales. The Grimm Brothers who collected the German tales are two of the major collectors of folk tales. You can find books of their folk tales in most libraries. You probably read some of the English tales to your little brothers and sisters. The Story of the Three Little Pigs, Jack and the Beanstalk. Those are two in a long list of favorite tales that jo Joseph Jacobs wrote down for English children. Folk tales are often similar to each other. For example, in many of them, there are three sisters or three brothers. The youngest one's almost, the, almost always the winner in the end. You can always tell which characters are good and which are bad in a folk tale. You can be sure the bad characters will be punished in the end. Although the lesson isn't written out to us in the folk tale like it is in a fable, you can usually figure out what the moral of a folk tale is. Alright, so that gives us some 
uh, differences and similarities in fables and folk tales kind of gives you a, a, a listening ear for some of the things that you've heard and some of the things that you will hear. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and, and you're going to need your book, your reader book. Um, I think you are, you may not. Let's go ahead and get your work text out. And I'm going to show you what your assignment is and then I'm going to help you with a page. So let me go ahead and bring this up. Uh, not that one. Must be this one. Ah! Okay. Okay. I forgot I had to take the answers off of the page. <laughs> okay. Let's look. This is in your work text. Let's look at page 16. This is the page I'm going to help you with, and page 15 is going to be the one you're going to do on your own. Okay? All right. So this is actually not about fables and folk tales. This page is actually about using a glossary correctly. Okay, up here in this uh, box on your page, you'll see the different parts of a glossary entry. Pronunciation tells how you pronunciate. That's going to be this part right here. Tells you how to say the word. And then part of speech. Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adjective? And that's going to be right here. These here. This mean, N means noun. V means verb. Here's some. Those are parts of speech. Guide words. Your guide words are the words that guide you to the, re to the right word. These words at the very top are your guide words. Kind of like in your Bible, when you're looking up a verse, it'll say Proverbs 28. And over here it might say Proverbs 29 or whatever. Some people have one on each, one on one side. Some people have two. So the guide words are at the top of the page. It means that the first word on this page is crawfish or crayfish and the last one is day sailor and anything that comes between those in alphabetical order would be on this page then you have an entry word those are the words you look up these dark words these are entry words and you have the definition that tells what it means and then you have something called a word form and that usually comes at the end and it sometimes it comes at the beginning but a word form is well, you can add an S to this and it'll show you, or you can add an ED, or you can change it with ING. It just tells you the different forms of that word. Not every word has a word form, but we're going to go ahead and label these, okay? Let me see how to do this. Cause I don't know. I don't want a crayon. I don't want a spray can. I want, what is this? A pixel pen? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these on your page where they go. So these here, see the arrows point to these? Do you remember what these are called? These are your guide words. So guide words goes here. So put right guide words on your page. These are the words that guide you to the word you're looking up. Guide words. Okay. All right. And then the words that you're looking up are called what? Each one of these dark words, they're called entry words. They're the words you're looking up. So entry word goes here. It's just pointing to one. It's just pointing to this first one, but that's okay. Notice the first word on this page is the first word up here. And notice that the, well, you can't see it, but the last word would be this one over here. All right. Now, let's see what this is. This is pointing to this funny looking thing called the pronunciation. So let's write that there. Pro. None. C. A shun. See how I sounded that out? Pronunciation. I pronu pronunciated it. Okay. All right. Now, here's here's what I was trying to tell you a while ago. Notice this entry word is crescendo. It's a verb. That's the part of speech. See this one? Crescendoed. 
This is what we call the word form. This shows us that we can change, we can use crescendo or crescendoed. You can change the word form. So this is word form. And not See, not every word has a different form. Or it doesn't show you. This is word form. Okay. All right, we have part of speech and definition. This is pointing to the definition. Definition means what the word means. So we're going to put definition. And then that must mean the hardest one is the part of speech. So make sure you fill that in. There we go. Good. Let's look at the bottom page. Bottom part of the page, I mean. All right. It says use the glossary page, which is right up here, to identify the glossary part needed to find the information. All right. So I'm going to change to a pencil. To find out if the word curfew is a noun or a verb, what would we need to look at? What, what part of the glossary entry would we look at to find out if it's a noun or a verb? We would look at the part of speech, right? So that would be part of speech. So we see how we're going to do that? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to hit pause and I want you to finish these last ones here. Turn it back on when you're done and we'll check and see if you got those right. I'm not grading it though, okay? Okay, are you ready? On number two, you should have gotten entry word. If you get it wrong, that's okay. On number three, you should have gotten definition. Number four would be guide words. Number five would be word form. And number six would be pronunciation. I hope you got those right. I bet you did. Okay, so your assignment, look back over at page 15. All right, what you're going to do, these are two, one's a fable, one's a folk tale. Okay, so you got to read both. And then at the bottom, there's five things to do. I think there's, yeah, there's just five things to do. And you just, you just need to, just follow the instructions really, really easy. I'd like for you to read those to yourself and then do these at the bottom, okay? It's not a graded page, although I might. I'll just have to wait and see it, okay? All right, let me know if you need any help.